A brand new bridge opens at the Russian border for vehicular traffic. Within and outside of Russia, many are saying that this event has given them reason to be optimistic. Russia, which is aiming to lift Western economic sanctions, sees the bridge as a means to this end. Given current conditions, it's safe to assume that the bridge represents the dreams of many business people. Russian attention to the bridge's construction has increased dramatically since it was first proposed 30 years ago, despite a delay of 34 years. The bridge connects <laughs> in China with Blaine's in Russia. The whole distance is around 20 kilometers. The bulk of it is inside Russian territory. According to the standard rate of infrastructure development, Russia would take up 13.4 kilometers under 20 kilometers to the bridge. It's unbelievable that it took 34 years to get from concept to opening the traffic, but the work can be done in six months. Why was it 34 years before work began on a bridge that would span less than 20 kilometers? Russia was not a country at that point in the 1980s. China, taking advantage of its cordial ties with the Soviet Union at the time, offered construction of a bridge over the border while the two countries were still technically at war. There was a pressing need to expand commercial activity in China in order to raise the country's economic standing, since its economy was very underdeveloped at the time. Less than 750 meters separate the Soviet Union's border from the northern border of China, which is divided by a river. People from the two areas may only travel over a 600-kilometer road, owing to the absence of cross-border roads, which is not helpful for the growth of commerce. This led the Chinese authorities to suggest a border crossing to the USR, with the onset of the global economic crisis, the Soviet Union was in a period of domestic political chaos, and there was no energy to build the bridge and implement the project until the end of 2016, at which point the project plan was revised again by the two countries. The building of the bridge has just begun, and it will cost $390 million to complete the project. The two governments have agreed to work together on everything from financing to building the launch into running the project as one single entity and then collecting fees from everyone involved. This is a fantastic concept in theory, but it's going to be really challenging to put into practice. It wasn't simple to construct the bridge on the icy border of Russia. As a first step, fixing the weather on the border between the two nations. In the winter, temperatures drop to 53 degrees Celsius and the pollution is thick and frigid, Working at temperatures so low is a tough test for anyone's ability to do their job. Second, the minus 53 degrees Celsius climate places unique demands on the materials used to build bridges. Concrete bridges in colder climates are more vulnerable to the wear and tear caused by thermal expansion and contraction. So, experts produced a steel called Core 20 VF grade that can survive very low temperatures of minus 60 degrees Celsius, and this steel was proposed for use in the bridge in order to make the bridge have a lifetime of 100 years and assure the mechanical qualities of the steel. Throughout the building era, the river will be at risk of flooding for two months a year, and the rising water level at this time can only temporarily halt the project. As a result, fewer months are spent building each year. Secondly, the bridge was just 20 kilometers long and took six years to build because Russia kept pushing back the building timeline for numerous reasons. On June 10, 2022, the bridge will formally open to the public. The bridge is projected to handle 730 freight trucks, 164 buses, and 68 other vehicles every day after its inauguration, allowing for the development of the economy and commerce between the two cities as desired by their respective populations. There weren't many people waiting to cross when the bridge initially opened. Once tensions escalated between Russia and Ukraine and ties between Moscow and the West deteriorated, however, this route took on increased significance for Russian business people. Historically, air and sea travel have been the preferred methods of transit for business and commerce between China and Russia. Both approaches are inefficient because of their time commitment and the constraints imposed by the nature of the goods and the volume of commerce. These barriers have been substantially removed thanks to the China-Russia bridge. The number of cars crossing the bridge each day has climbed from 50 to over 1,000 as a result of the harsh ties between Russia and Ukraine and the economic sanctions imposed by numerous nations. The bridge's initial 16-hour schedule has been expanded to a 24-hour schedule, and an electronic advanced reservation service has been made available. Nonetheless, traffic on the bridge remains heavy in spite of this. Cross-border commerce between the two nations grew once the bridge opened. 
This, however, is just the start. Russia has started pushing forward with construction of a second bridge that connects to northeast China and is made of road and rail. With a total length of 7,193 meters and a cost of $400 million, the railway bridge is a massive infrastructure project. The bridge's planning process began up in 2014, but several issues have caused it to be pushed back. The bridge's planning began in 2014, but several problems have caused it to be delayed for the last few years. In November of 2022, the last rail bridge will open to the public. If completed, the whole planned railway will be capable of transporting 21 million tons of goods each year. Russia as a whole stands to benefit greatly from this bridge's inauguration, as it will serve as a focal point of the country's new export route and usher in an era of advanced manufacturing and streamlined supply chain. Russia hopes that by building the railway bridge, it would be able to enhance its exports of iron ore, graphene, coal mineral fertilizers, and wood to China. You are aware that there are over 1.4 billion people in China and that their requirements are much above what we could ever provide. Russian business people should feel renewed optimism thanks to the railway bridge. The bridge, however, was put through rigorous testing while it was being built. The weather in northeast China is unpredictable and unpredictable, especially in the winter. These considerations are given considerations are given considerable attention throughout the bridge's construction. Low temperatures create an artificial hard bottleneck in transportation when just one river is used. Geographically, it has a continental monsoon climate. Therefore, there are distinct seasonal changes throughout the year. Unfortunately, the extreme cold in winter lasts for an exceptionally long period, and the yearly average temperature is only 2.9 degrees so it is already impossible to construct a bridge across the lake. This January has been the coldest on record, with temperatures averaging 20.0 degrees below zero and dipping to a record low of 40.8 degrees. It's bad enough to construct bridges. As a result, the bridge's safety throughout construction was guaranteed, and it was designed to account for a range of weather conditions. In addition, they use cutting-edge anti-corrosion coating, high-bolt construction deep, water coffer, dam dredging, and other technologies to hasten the bridge's completion so that it may be used by vehicles by 2020. Several experts were not anticipating this, but it brings fresh hope to Russia. In any case, the bridge's formal opening as a freight corridor for Russia means that the country can now cut the cost of moving cargo by water and that, despite transportation's problematic history, more people will have access to new economic prospects. These road and rail bridges, according to some foreign observers, are part of China's grandiose Belt and Road program, which is still opposed by several nations. Just, what do you make of this? Please subscribe and leave a comment if you like this video. We appreciate you staying tuned.